Congratulations on the success of Umbrella Academy. What would you say kind of set the show apart from like, you know, your, your usual sort of DC and Marvel shows out at the moment? Um, I, th- I think it's pretty, pretty simple. I think it was just Steve Blackman's vision of it, taking it in this sort of like more almost like indie cinematic, like a Wes Anderson or even like a Harold and Maude, like this sort of like this very um, unique world uh, that, that sets it apart from, I think, other more traditional or straightforward um, graphic novel or comic book shows. Um, and that was all, that was pretty much all him, but I, he certainly was inspired by Gerard and Gabriel who, who have their, a very different kind of aesthetic too, um, in their, um, telling of the graphic novel of Umbrella Academy, but that was all him. He just, he just had this vision for it and he took it and ran with it. And I think that's what made it special from the way it's shot to the music, to the way it's played. Um, yeah, all that stuff. Definitely. I mean, him. the soundtrack was great as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I mean, he would say, you know, we'd be on set and we'd be talking about things and, and he'd be talking about his vision and seeing that executed at the end of the day was really amazing. But he would be talking about some of these songs when we were shooting it. He's like, I'm going to try and get this song. We're gonna be, and like, you know, he'd be playing these scenes and it would be, and th- th- these are amazing songs, but like putting them into this, superhero world uh <laughs> in this kind of like no man's land universe was yeah. just you know kind of brilliant yeah i mean i think we're alone now compared to like an apocalyptic time travel thing <laughs> it's kind of crazy isn't it and then, like especially like the juxtaposition of that when they're like depressed and their dad has just died <laughs> yeah. and they're like all in their own world and then you just have this crazy sequence with that beautiful final shot of that sequence where you have like the dollhouse was just you know that's pretty pretty genius definitely definitely and i mean you've played such a wide range of roles in like film and tv as well so you got comedy and orange is the new black you got like being a soldier and overlord um what kind of drew you to this like superhero sci-fi show was it as you said the vision of the director um you know like uh, these kinds of things uh, sci-fi or anything that's action or anything that involves kind of a hyped reality is always, uh, in a way, a little more difficult because you're really having to trust the, the creators of it and um, the writers of it because there's so much that you just can't imagine, that you can't see. Yeah. Um, when you're doing sequences, you know, where you're hung up on a string and you're having things like thrown at you and <laughs> air blown yeah. at you and you're trying to imagine this world uh, with a green screen in front of you is, is pretty difficult. Um, that's why I think you got to, first of all, you go from the writing. Luckily, we had pretty good, you know, great writing for this. Um, and then you just kind of have to trust the, the, the people you're getting involved with because there is no real way to see it. But that's also what makes it exciting at the end of the day because when you do see it, there's just so much more to it and, and it really makes all that hard work uh, seem worth it. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, were you aware of Leonard's motives from the start or did you kind of learn as you were going along when you were filming? Was, was I aware of what? I'm sorry. Uh, Leonard's motives in the show or did you kind of learn throughout? Uh, I, I always had the basic, I like the basic thing. Okay. But um, so I always, I, I kind of always had an idea where he was going and we, we were trying to ride that line of like, this guy's kind of a weirdo, but like, we want to keep it sort of like, like he's like, you know, Ellen's character is so vulnerable. She's yeah. so, she's never had anyone give her any attention at all. So this guy coming in that there is an element of it. Like you're like, well, I get, even though he's like really kind of pushy, like I get why someone might be like, Oh, I get, I, I like, I get why she's, she's hanging around him. But he, he's like a total, and, and like I tried never to like think about it that way at the playing of it we tried to just play it as it is but he's a total gaslighter he's a total manipulator it's a very at the end of the day it's obviously an abusive relationship um, so there there were always little like moments of that mm-hmm. that, that we, we noticed but we, we tried not to play into that <laughs> the biggest surprise for me the biggest surprise for me at the end of the day was reading the his childhood stuff yeah, because I yeah. never, we never talked about that. And Steve would tell me, "Oh, there's something really interesting going to come on episode seven. 
they would just kind of like hint at it. And then we got that script and then I met the young boy who was playing the younger version of me and seeing that stuff happen and, and uh, Leonard getting out of jail. That was really, that was a real surprise to me. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I was kind of rooting through it for him throughout the the season. I don't know about you. I really didn't want him to be who he was in the end. Yeah, well, it's so kind of, you know, you know, I mean, the reveal, I don't know if necessarily the reveal, and these are like spoilers, by the way, so if anyone hasn't seen it, <laughs> you should watch it. Out. <laughs> yeah. But like, you should watch it, first of all. It's, it's already been out for a week and a half or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But um, the big, like, the reveal of him being kind of how he is we knew, but but then going forward, what that does to Vanya, that was an even bigger shock. So mm. like, yeah, like you could argue in a way he's like, you know, her family has been pretty awful to her, even though his motivations are terrible. Their motivations are kind have been kind of terrible. So it, that I, I guess that's what makes it sad. It's like you're either rooting for those guys guys who have been terrible to her, or this guy who's being terrible to her. <laughs> and the victim in this whole thing is poor Vanya, who who. In some ways, rightfully so, and the world. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like working with the brilliant Ellen Page? I mean, it was it must have been quite intense, some of those scenes. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, like what actors always say, the stereotype, they're like, it was a joy. It was, I mean, like, this was like, it was out of this world. I really, I, I was surprised. I was really surprised. We hadn't met each other until we showed up on set. And we showed up on set, and we had like a little, like, we discussed, some stuff with the first, uh, one of our directors and I mean it was like it was like working with a kindred spirit like right away we clicked and I mean we knew we were going to be friends like right from that moment and we continued to be friends I you know getting to work with not only is she a friend but she's also a brilliant actress and incredibly smart and I think she should be directing things and writing things and doing she's she's just got such a a mind for for telling stories and for connecting i think to humans who who sometimes are left out in this world Mm. um and i just i mean i I love her to death absolutely love her yeah definitely and i mean were you disappointed that you didn't get (laughs) didn't get to take part in a dance scene at all I think it's for the best, considering that was <laughs> yeah. in the first episode. The big one was in the first episode. I think it would have, no one would have kept watching. They'd have been like, okay, that's enough. That's <laughs> enough of this. Yeah. But it, they probably made the right decision. Oh, <laughs> nice. Um, so what would you say, because there's this whole thing throughout the show about Ben. What would you say your theory is yeah. on his death? Do you have one at all? I, I don't know. Like, I, I sort of, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I mean, he clearly was killed, killed on a mission. I think that's, I, I feel like it's pretty clear. I know there's like some debate about this and I could be more specific about what mission that was, but like I, I, I since there is like a debate about this, I sort of don't want to like even spoil it. I, I will leave it at he was, he was killed on a mission and, and the circumstances of what happened, I, I mean, that could have been, uh, it could be a million different things, but I think uh, if the show keeps going, we're going to get to figure out what happened to him. Mm, okay. Quickly moving on to Jack Ryan. Um, will we see any more of Victor yeah. in season two, do you know? Because I feel like he, his arc wasn't kind of completed in a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree with that. I, I, what I, I can tell you right now that I, I'm not doing season two of Jack Ryan. Um, in fact, the, the season is kind of different. Like, like all of Jack Ryan's storylines, um, I think they're trying to continue each one staying separately in its own way, just like Hunter okay. Red October and um, the most recent Jack Ryan with Chris Pine stand like they stand in the same universe, but also different. Yeah. So this one, I think, is going to be a different global conflict than what was happening in our season. So uh, I don't believe a lot of our, uh, the people besides the CIA folks will, will be making uh, returns, at least at this point. But um, the show is very successful, and there's no reason that they couldn't come back to some of our stories. I think it's just up to the writers and creators to decide where they want to go with it. Yeah, definitely, because I really liked that aspect about, you know, the whole drone and ethics behind it. I thought that was really, really interesting. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's interesting because we're living in an ever-changing world and global conflict are continue, continuing to change and the um, well just the fact that the Syrian conflict was in the news so much more a year ago than it is nowadays 
it, it's you know it's, it's it's terrible because there's so much more trouble going on there still but it also lets them focus on the new and emerging conflicts that are in the world today. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so uh, last question. Um, are you working on anything else at the moment at all? Uh, yeah, I got a couple things, unfortunately. If we live in this world nowadays where no one's allowed to talk about anything. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> no. under NGAs, and you can't talk about anything you're doing until like it's out basically um just like we know we no one was allowed to talk about ben no one was allowed to talk about <laughs> leonard or anything so so i'm i'm currently in that situation right now but i i, I will say that they're they're two very special and one very interesting project i think you guys will will enjoy but at this point i can't really talk about it okay <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining yeah, us today. I'm anyway, sorry. I'm sorry. I blame, I blame the business. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so yeah. much.